Hello and welcome back to episode 3 of Jalim's Vlogs. For those who don't know me, my name is Jess, better known by the author Monica Jalim, and I'm the author of the Monster Inside Chronicles, the first vampire series. This week, I'm in the midst of my rewrite for The Birth of a Monster, though I thought I'd take a chance to have a look at the setting for at least the first two books of the first vampire series, The Aldovian Empire. I apologise for the crudely drawn map, I am not an artist, but it does give you a general idea of the shape and layout of the empire as a whole. In addition to the map you see on screen, there are also a collection of islands to the south called the Southern Isles. There are hundreds of islands among them, the largest and most prominent being the Rook Island, the centre of trade in the known world of Svethan. I won't cover the Southern Islands much for this video, I only mention them because many consider it a part of the Eldovian continent, though they are mainly self-governing and have little to do with the politics of the mainland. For this video I will give a brief history on the empires that have existed on the continent and then talk about both the landforms um, and significant locations on the mainland, so let's get started. The recorded history of the Aldovian continent spans back 8,000 years or roughly five eras with warring periods in between most of these eras. This history began to be recorded following the enlightenment of the six gods. The first era was known as the Lithian era, named after the imperial clan of the time. It lasted 2,340 years and was followed by a decade-long war between two subordinate clans, the Maldovia and the Tessalt. The Maldovian clan was victorious and the following era was known as the Maldovian era. They ruled for 838 years, after which the revived Tessalt clan annihilated them and assumed control of the continent for the preceding 1,000 550 years in the Tessalt era before the clan died out with much of the population in a deadly plague that swept the continent. Uh, in the 44 years following this, the population on the continent mainly kept to their own, but eventually a mercenary leader rose to conquer the continent and the Beganan era began, lasting 1,516 years. Finally, the current era began in an economic and political takeover that completely crushed the Beganan bloodline. The new imperial clan, named after its first emperor, Aldovan, uh, referred to the new calendar as the Aldovian era, which is currently in its 1704th year. Despite the continent being referred to mostly as Aldovia, the continent was originally split into three separate countries, which in some instances still keep their ancient namesakes. Uh, Eldrin in the northwest, the largest of the three, Archaea in the northeast, and Lovalon in the south. The continent is bordered mostly by sea, with the wide ocean that nobody is ever known to have crossed successfully to the east, Whalers Strait to the south, named for the whaling tribes of the southern continent, and the Jade Sea to the west. To the north is the most natural barrier, um, not only for the northern mountain range, uh, home to the dwarves, skilled craftsmen thanks to their affinity with fire, but also the desolate lands that span north into the unknown. Many previous empires um, have attempted to expand north only to either never return or turn around when they could find nothing beyond, no fertile land, water or any signs of life for as far as the eye could see. Uh, the only split in the northern mountain range is in the centre where the endless lake lies, so named because one cannot see the other side when standing at either the southern or northern ends. It takes a regular size boat a full day to traverse its length. Just to the south of the Endless Lake is the city of Tool, one of the five ancient trade cities of the Empire. 
Tool is the northernmost city and most of the dwarven crafts pass through its gates. It is known for its high city walls that depict and celebrate its greatest products, including its expansive food crops, oils and wines. To its west is the Singing Sands Desert, which takes up much of the northwestern corner of the empire. It is so named for the way the wind whistles as it passes between the high sand dunes. To the east of Tull is predominantly farmland and grassland. With three weeks journey, one can arrive at the small village of Cordon, where our main character of the first vampire, Rasa, is born and initially raised. It is quite an isolated village and certainly the most northeastern village, as very few villages dare build so close to the Greenvale Forest, which dominates much of the eastern coastline. The Greenvale Forest is home to the elves, who are reclusive and very protective over their forest thanks to their affinity with the earth. At the southern end of Greenvale Forest you will find the second of the five ancient trade cities, Varkevia. Varkevia is the easternmost trade city known primarily for its night market as well as the salt mined from the mines in the Saisin mountain range about a week's travel to its east. Varkevia is situated on a hill to the west of its small bay Many have described Varkevia's layout, particularly when viewed from the bay at night, as like a river of fire spreading from a peak down to meet the waters of the bay. To the south of Varkevia is a little disturbed region of the empire, given its distance and limited influence from the capital. The region is also known for its high coastal cliffs and the deep canyons which its rivers run through. These canyons are thought to be mostly used by thieves and other undesirable criminals. Seeing as trading ships are often too large to navigate the entire river as a shortcut from the Southern Isles to Varkevia, the trading ships most often take the coastal route instead. As we travel west, we pass mostly over grassland and rich food crops before passing the southern end of the Saisin mountain range, then meeting the Fobin forest. About a third of the size of Greenvale, but still a significantly large area. If one were to emerge from the northwestern edge of the forest, they would meet the end of the Star Canyon, a wide canyon in the centre of which lies the Star Pavilion, a centre of great power and ancient wisdoms, long lost to the world of Svethan. When one exits the other side of the canyon and continues southwest, they eventually meet the deep and wide bay of Port Lovellon, the third of the five ancient trade cities, and the one that is most known for its sea trade, thanks to its deep bay. As cities go, Port Lovellon is actually quite small in terms of its population. Most of its residents are only temporary travellers there. Just seven to ten days to the northwest of Port Lovellon lies the ancient city most known for its natural beauty, Fountain Ridge. The city lies on the edge of extensive woodlands that are rife with rivers and waterfalls, the largest of which is actually beside the city itself. If one were to follow the river located just to the south of Fountain Ridge up towards the northeast, one would be following the major north-south trade route. There is a fork in this river. Uh, the fork that continues to the northeast leads to the final ancient trade city, Bardet, which lies in the centre of the empire. It was once known as the capital and is by far the largest of the five trade cities. But when Aldovan ascended the throne, he moved the capital to show his authority. Barde has since become known as the Academy City, as all manner of youths come to train in different professions in this city, including the three major professions, the knights, magicians and scholars. If one were to take the northern fork on the river, they would eventually come to the current capital, which is where Aldovan erected it on the cross between the North South River and the East West River. It is currently also the location of the Imperial Palace. Thanks to this ideal location for trade, the city became rich quite quickly despite the influence of the ancient trade cities. Well, that brings us to the end of our look at the Eldovian continent. I hope you enjoyed this video and perhaps got a better idea of the empire as a whole. If you have any requests regarding other locations you wish for me to cover in a vlog or perhaps another part of the Svethan world such as the characters or religions or perhaps the races then please make a request below and I'd be happy to prepare something. 
If you would like to connect more, please use any of the social accounts listed in the description below. I also have a Patreon listed there. If anyone is willing to have a look, you'll find you get early access to a lot of extra and behind the scenes content, some of which I've posted what I call tasted for here on YouTube, such as my author Q&As and a segment I like to call story time. If you can't contribute to Patreon, that's totally okay. I, but I would also really appreciate it if you could give any likes or comments to this video or even consider subscribing to the channel. It's free and a great way to show support for your favorite content creators. Thanks so much for joining me for this week, guys. As always, I hope you're doing well and continue to do well. Until next time, see you later.